Hi, I'm Bob Tibber with www.learnvisualstudio.net and I want you to take a look on screen right now uh, because uh, I wanted to illustrate an idea. It's easier to show you than explain it. Here I have a simple application with a grid. I set the grid's background to red and I have a simple text block and I've got a, I don't know, 16 point, 18 point font there. And so watch what happens though whenever I resize this. I get to a certain point and uh, it triggers the change of the background color to yellow and the font size to a larger font size, I think like 24 or something. Now let's continue to resize and the background color changes to blue and I use an even larger font for the text block. And so this is made possible by an object called the Visual State Manager and it does exactly what it sounds like. It manages the visual state of your application, where things belong, uh, the sizes of things, the colors of things, based on triggers that you create. So essentially you can manipulate any property of any object, you can change, resize, reposition, set the visibility, you can send, set the font size, set the font family, anything that you possibly can imagine based on the current size of the window or the current available screen real estate. And so think about how that applies to the Universal Windows platform. Uh, one of the selling points is that you're able to write one code base and then use it across all these different form factors. And so this allows you to accommodate different screen resolutions for different form factors with the same code base. Um, and so this is a very foundational concept of what we're going to talk about briefly in this lesson. We'll talk about how this applies to adaptive layout. In other words, changing the entire layout of your application based on the screen size, the form factor. We'll talk about that in the very next video. But again, this is all made possible because of a object called the Visual State Manager. You create a Visual State group and inside of that group you create a series of states. So a state can be anything. You give it a name and you give it some triggers. So in this case, take a look at the application we were just looking at. So here I have a uh, visual state that I called phone. I have another visual state that I called tablet or visual state tablet. And then another visual state that I called visual state desktop. Now you can name these things anything you want to. And I don't know that there's any standard sizes or you know anything that you've got to stick with. It, it's whatever makes sense for your application and that's why I think you know, testing your application continually on different devices and Visual Studio obviously makes that very simple. But, uh, but testing it as many different form factors as possible will help you see the optimal layout for that given form factor. Uh, so here we go, we have a visual state. And a visual state com is comprised of two things. First of all, a series of triggers and then a series of setters. So when a trigger is essentially uh, in this case, either the minimum window width or the minimum window height that once it's achieved will trigger this particular visual state. So once that state is triggered, then it applies these setters. And these setters are very similar to the setters that we had in styles, right? Where we have a target property. So here's the object, the color grid object. And I'm going to set the background value to red. All right, same thing with the text block, this message text block and I use the dot notation just like we would to access members of an object in C-sharp. So we use the dot notation to access the property font size and we set its value to 18 whenever we are in that smallest state where the minimum window width is zero. The next state up has a trigger of minimum window width of 600. Uh, and at that point then we were applying uh, the uh, the setters that we're applying are setting the background color grid uh, to yellow and the font size of the message text block to 36 and then finally the desktop as long as the minimum window width was 800 once we stretched it out that far then we were able to change the background to blue and the font size to 54 all right so conceptually it's easy what uh, it's very easy uh, it allows you to get creative with how you want to make changes to your application um, using this tool. And that's really all there is to the notion of a uh, what we were calling in the video an adaptive trigger. Here is an adaptive trigger object. We set the trigger and then once that trigger is fired off, we apply the setters. Okay, great. Now, uh, I wanted to show you uh, that 
that there's actually a tool that will help you do this. Now, I don't like this tool, honestly. I'll be completely honest with you. I would prefer to do it by hand. I have, feel like I have more control. But if you're a more visual type uh, person and you don't remember the syntax and you don't want to look up on your cheat sheet, as we'll add this to our cheat sheet in a little bit, you can use this trick. So uh, in your project, in the Solution Explorer, you can see here I have a new project called Using Blend for Visual States, and I have the same color grid and text block, but I haven't added anything else to it just yet. Uh, here uh, in, the in the Solution Explorer, I'm going to right-click on the project and select Design and Blend. And so Blend is a tool that should be installed along with Visual Studio, uh, and it really was intended for more design work, and by design I mean aesthetic design work. Uh, and you see that it has many of the same features of Visual Studio. Uh, on the right hand side we have the properties window. Uh, there is also a solution explorer docked by default over here on the left. There are two things that Blend does for you that you can't easily do in, in um, in, uh, in Visual Studio and one of them is it gives you this cool little way of creating visual states and uh, recording the changes in a given state and then secondly working with animation which we're not going to talk about in this series uh, but let me show you how this works in fact it's easier if I just go straight to the design view uh, for this and let's uh, go down to where we can actually see our our design area so there's this object and timeline um, window typically docked on the left hand side and you can see that I can drill down and see the color grid and whatever's inside the color grid in this case the message text block and then I'm going to go to the states tab here that's usually docked up on the upper left hand corner and what I'll do is I'm going to add a state group so I'm going to click this little button here and this will create a visual state group I'm going to add a state to that group, and I'm going to call this state uh, phone. We can call it anything we want. I'm going to add another state that I'm going to call uh, tablet, and I'm going to add another state that I call desktop. And uh, notice that whenever I select any of these, that a little red light is selected on the uh, left hand side and there's a red border all around the designer area you might also see that phone state recording is on uh, now I select tablet and tablet state recording is on so essentially what you're doing here is you're recording the changes in the property window that you want to be made when you're in that given state now there's something else that we need to do before we actually um, uh, continue on with this and that is we need to set the triggers so as you can see here there's a little exclamation a uh, little lightning bolt off to the right hand side I'm gonna click edit adaptive triggers and I'm gonna add an adaptive trigger and set in this case the minimum window width to zero and click OK and then for tablet I'm gonna set its uh, its minimum width I think to 600 Again, these are arbitrary numbers. You would want to test this for your own application. There are no standards that I'm aware of at certain breakpoints you should be using this versus that. I think this is something you get to determine on your own as, a, as a, the developer. So the minimum with 600, that'll trigger the, the tablet uh, state. And then finally, the desktop will set its minimum to 800. So here, 800, great. Now, whenever in desktop mode, uh, what we want to do, I'm going to select the message text block here in the objects and timeline window, and then I'm going to change the font to, oh, let's say uh, 54. I forget what we chose originally. Um, and then I'm going to go to the tablet, and I'm going to change the text block uh, to, let's say, 36. And then I'm going to go to the phone and change it to, like, 16. All right, and so now let me go ahead, save what I have, and then I'm gonna run the application. And you can see that I was able to make those changes using this tool. Now again, I would prefer to just type it in myself. It does create nice clean XAML, but there are some cases like when working with colors and brushes, I didn't like the XAML that it outputted. 
that's me just being a little snobby here. Uh, but otherwise, you can use this tool to help you generate these sorts of things. Now, when you close down Blend, you're going to come back into Visual Studio. It says, hey, uh, any windows that you had open, uh, they changed out from under Visual Studio. Do you want to reload this? Yes, I want to reload it. And now you can see all of the visual states and the triggers and the setters are all updated here in Visual Studio. All right. So again, a very simple concept, very powerful in how we can go about using this to style up our applications based on the form factor and screen resolution. And again, foundational concept for building real universal Windows platform applications. And so we're going to use this now in the next lesson to actually create a more realistic app and utilize these concepts to, to change out the layout uh, based on the available screen resolution. All right, so stay tuned to exciting part two of this uh, in the very next lesson. Thanks.